Erotic Fantasy Stories, Part 20 First Contact Let me take you to a place you haven't been to before. We are standing in a big room with an elegant, futuristic design. The room has no floor apart from a narrow plank on which we are standing. Looking down, you see the surface of a planet a hundred kilometers below us. We are actually standing in the cargo bay of a large spaceship that has entered a planet's atmosphere surrounded by nothing but thin air. The shaky part of entering the atmosphere is over, but the ship is still swaying back and forth a little, and without a railing, you have trouble keeping your balance and not fall off the plank and down towards the planet. As the ship's first contact specialists, we are the only ones on board with a gender. All other crew members are gender neutral, at least during their working hours. In their free time, they can equip their synthetic bodies with any kind of gender they want. We don't have that freedom as our bodies are 100% biologically engineered. This also makes our bodies vulnerable, so we have to wear space suits to not suffocate or freeze to death. Those suits are made from a thin, transparent smart material that follows all of our body's movements. So, in essence, we are naked. Well, I am naked. Part of our job is to excite each other, so I'm wearing nothing but my transparent space suit. My body is heavily muscled, in an aesthetically pleasing way. My most striking features are my masculine face, and my huge dick. You are less naked, for the sole purpose of increasing your sexual attractiveness. You are wearing a short skirt made from a thin, semi-transparent silk, combined with stockings, and a pair of extremely high-heeled shoes. Your breasts are covered by little round pieces of fabric, barely enough to cover your nipples. You are also wearing a lot of jewelry, large earrings, a tight collar, adorned with diamonds, and a variety of precious bracelets. Your hips are beautifully feminine, and your breasts beautifully large. We are in the preparation phase for our mission, checking our assets. As if by accident, you lift your skirt a little, and let the wind blow it up a little more from below, so I can catch a glimpse of the fact that you are not wearing anything underneath. I react by getting a hadron clearly visible to you. You respond to that with a smile, lose your balance, if by accident or not, nobody knows, and stumble towards me, holding on to me with one hand, while the other one is brushing against my dick. The spacesuit's smart materials allow us to adequately feel the touch and both our heartbeats are speeding up, we are clearly exciting each other, which means that our assets are working. It's time to go. I wrap my arms around you and let us fall over the edge of the plank. We are falling towards the planet at an increasing speed. You let out a surprised yelp and cling to me tightly, your clothes in a state of disarray revealing your sweet genitals. Our bodies rubbing against each other in a highly enjoyable fashion. I give you a passionate kiss. The space suits actually open up between our lips, allowing us to feel each other's tongue and exchange a pleasurable amount of saliva. The ground comes closer fast, and before long, I open my parachute. A pair of gigantic wings, that sprout from my back, breaking our fall, turning it into a slow glide. 
I carry you on my arms now, so you don't need to open your own parachute. We can keep it as a backup. The air gets thicker, and the bluish ground reveals itself as some kind of vegetation, like a jungle canopy. As we move closer, the canopy turns out to be actually made entirely of blue tendrils instead of leaves, like a sea of thin, long tentacles, slowly swaying in the wind. We have no idea what awaits us. Every planet is different. There is no clearing, so we descend towards this strange vegetation, slowing down as much as possible, and then drop right towards it. Sinking into the tendrils, some of them get squished by the impact, releasing a bluish plume that engulfs us. After a couple of meters, we have penetrated the canopy and land on a hard structure that looks like tree branches, but is made from hard, crystallized rock. While we look around, something is moving towards us. It's the blue tendrils, carrying a long, cylindric object, made from the crystallized rock, but with a smooth surface, and a sharp, pointy tip. One thing you learn as a first contact specialist, is to not jump to conclusions. But it appears, that the tendrils are animated by some kind of intelligence, with the ability to refine raw materials into primitive tools, like this cylinder. The tendrils are now thrusting the cylinder towards me, trying to pierce my body with it. The force of the impact throws me off my feet, but the spacesuit's material is strong enough to withstand the pointy tip. Apparently, the denizens feel threatened by our appearance, and they are now trying to eliminate that threat. Again, it's easy to jump to conclusions, but we might have killed some of them when we broke through what we thought was the planet's vegetation. Another surprise comes when the cylinder's tip suddenly begins to glow bright red, building up some kind of force field. This is not a primitive tool, but a very advanced piece of technology. I am attacked again, and this time the cylinder pierces right through my suit and hits me in the center of my torso, breaking bone and drawing blood. Fortunately, it fails to hit any vital organs, as it is obviously unaware of the human physique and its weaknesses. But if the attacks continue, I will not survive for long. The cylinder is pulled out of my body to strike me again, but you jump in front of me, kicking the thing to the side, so it misses me by less than an inch. We have to move fast now. Unfortunately, most first encounters go like this. Some mistake or misunderstanding always leads to death and destruction. As the initiators of first contact, we are under strict orders not to return the violence in any way and to rather die at the hands of the aliens than risking an incident that could threaten the long-term relationship between our two races for many hundred years. But we are also not keen on dying, so we are now implementing the Plan B protocol, which is a remarkably high rate of success. With a silent command, I order my spacesuit to retract. As a result, I'm now exposed to the planet's air. It is not immediately toxic, but smells in an undiscernible way that makes me nauseous. I force myself to shake off the feeling of sickness and concentrate on you. Fortunately, you make that very easy for me, because you are so lovely. You have also ordered your spacesuit to retract and stand over me with splayed legs, lifting your skirt with one hand, grabbing your pussy with the other, throwing back your head 
your hair flowing around it like a black wave, your mouth uttering a sound of pure lust. You now, how to push my buttons, and you are now pushing them as hard as you can. Then, you let yourself down on me, pierce yourself on my hard dick. No time for foreplay. We are going right for the main course. I penetrate you deeply, and it feels exactly like you imagine it. Kneading my dick with your grinding movements, you make me push into you even harder. I begin to move, and you tremble with every movement, letting out sweet little moans that turn me on so much that I almost forget about the serious wound in my belly. My whole existence becomes centered on you. I grab you and hold you tight, stroke along your spine, clutching your ass cheeks, and push your loins against mine. You hold my head between your hands, sinking your lips into mine. I push, and push, and with every push, you are raised further towards oblivious lust until you have completely forgotten yourself, tears of happiness flowing down your gorgeous face. In essence, we are showing the aliens our peaceful intentions by having sex in front of them, completely unrestrained and totally vulnerable. This procedure has a very high success rate, as most alien races are completely unaware of gender, but empathical enough to grasp the concept and feel fascinated by it. Fortunately, this is also the case for our current hosts, or otherwise we would be dead by now. Gender-based sexuality. The very thing that has caused us humans such a great deal of pain, death and destruction in our colorful past has now become our finest asset in the future of space diplomacy. It allowed our kind to initiate peaceful relationships with thousands of other intelligent races all over the galaxy. We realize that our plan B is working perfectly when the aliens begin to participate in our lovemaking. While you are still climaxing, I am pulled away from you and disappear in a twine of blue tendrils so you cannot see what is happening to me, but you can expect that it is very similar to what happens to you now. Unaware of how this thing works, the tendrils enter your body through all the holes they can find, moving back and forth, rubbing against you, penetrating you more deeply than anyone ever before, making you feel strangely excited and panicked at the same time. But you have trained for this, and after a while, you begin to thoroughly enjoy the treatment guiding the aliens into pleasing you more skillfully, and after a while, even enabling them to feel the pleasure themselves. In the upcoming months, we will travel all around the alien planet, have sex with the denizens and with each other, over and over again, spreading the peace and establishing a lasting diplomatic relationship. First contact successful.